Welcome back to the Naked Gardener channel. In this video, we're gonna be showing you our first full garden tour on our homestead. Being here on this homestead, by the time we purchased the house and everything, we wasn't too sure that we're gonna have a garden this season. Uh, luckily, there was a nice local nursery that we were able to get some cheap starts and we normally just grow most of all of our plants from seeds. The disadvantage of getting starts from a nursery, you lose the type of variety. However, these turned out to be very good so far. Let's take a look at them. Now we're in the entryway of our uh, garden and uh, Mrs. Nicky Gardener wanted to put some trellises similar to ones that we had back at our uh, original place. And we have about six right now and she has different vegetables growing up them. They're still at a very tender age. Most of these are from seeds. Uh, we have a mixture of squashes, cucumbers. Uh, do you remember what you had on this one? Spaghetti squash and butter... Uh... Butternut squash. So you have spaghetti squash on this row and butternut squash on this row? Or vice versa. Or vice versa. It seems like this side right here is... Now, a lot of this was very clayish and uh, we tried to get some mulch, but if y'all paid attention to our live, it's hard to find uh, a lot of stuff in bulk items in the country. I think we possibly found a, a one company to send us some, uh, and we were gonna try to get it here. However, we had such rainy season the first part of the spring, and our ground was just sat saturated. We were scared that they were gonna rut it up. These two containers we brought from us from their previous uh, house. Uh, these were part of our thrillers, fillers, and fillers. Uh, to help kind of do a curb appeal uh, for the house. we In here we have some parsley, some trailing rosemary that has just basically just took off. And then we also have some, uh, these were supposed to be uh, cucumber, the bush variety, but it seemed like these are more viney than ever. In this container, we got some two big uh, cucumbers. In that container, we already harvest a nice size cucumber and it was delicious. Uh, but we have, finally, this parsley is going to see, going to flower, I should say, and we're gonna allow that to go to flower and to harvest the seed, so that way during the fall, we'll be able to plant some more of it. Here was another one of our thrillers, fillers, and spillers. We had a patio tomato in here, and then we had some bunch of onions and with some sweet alyssums. And the, we have these, I guess these are volunteer sunflowers. We're just gonna allow them to grow. Uh, these tomatoes. We got those from the farmer's market. Stubice. Uh-huh. So, and uh, I think we got a few tomatoes from these already. Yes, um, I've been able to harvest a few and uh, that was from Paris natural growers at the farmer's market. Yeah, so this one was supposed to be our tomato cucumber mixture row uh, and it's turned out pretty well. So Mrs. Naked Gardener uh, was trying to find a lot of space for all the seeds that we were able to start, especially like our okra right here. Uh, so we got our little auger and, and uh, did these all in ground. Uh, over here we have the Alabama Reds and on the other end we have the Star of David. Now the rain that we had at the beginning of or towards the end of this spring area, it was just stunting a lot of this growth, especially with the uh, clay soil that we have here. And now that we're pretty much gotten out of that and we're getting into the hot summer months, as you can see, it's starting to grow, starting to take off a lot better now. Right here is our pepper row. Uh, we're not gonna cover everything. However, this was also a part of our thriller, filler, and spiller uh, experiment. And we have our cilantro that is going to seed, and we're gonna save those seeds as well. Uh, these were some nice Marconi. Uh, they're getting some nice size on here. We're gonna allow them to get a nice big red size on there. Uh, we also got some volunteer uh, marigolds, and this was pretty interesting. We had, I think, lettuce in here, and uh, every in between seasons, we uh, top dress it with some of our own compost. So when I did, 
I thought when we start seeing these small little florets, I thought they were tomatillo, so I was getting all excited. However, I started seeing that the shell of these had dropped on the ground. I was like, well, only ground cherries do that. So I was like, let me take a look at this. I took a, I opened up the husk and there, lo and behold, is a ground cherry. I was so disappointed. Now, Mrs. Naked Garden, she loved these. And I guess Maya from Roots and Refuse, they love them because of their, the taste of them. But to me, well, the ones we had at our own place, they were kind of tart. They're nature sweet tarts. Yeah, but. They're good. Now these aren't, at, oh, that one was actually sweet. Yeah, they. But the other ones I was just, eh. People that don't like them, I think that they just bit into it at the wrong time. When they fall like that and the husk is dry, they're actually sweet. Yeah, you don't want to pick them when they're on the uh, vine itself. You just want to allow them to fall. Here we have another volunteer plant. It's a, it looks like a zucchini plant. We also had some lettuce in here. Once again, when we top dress it, we don't know what's in our compost uh, from the seeds, uh, but we're happy that uh, we have these extra fruits. So. I have found that I love our volunteer plants, and when a, vol a plant volunteers, I fight to allow that plant to grow because to me, it's always the most productive and strong one. Yeah, it's, it, we've noticed that it's able to fight off a lot of pests, disease, and a lot of, uh, be more uh, drought tolerant, especially in our North Texas climate. Here we have a uh, experiment that we tried last year and it didn't go too well. We have some horseradish that we got from the uh, grocery store, decided to plant it inside it. Last year, we intermittent planting this horseradish with a sweet potato and it didn't do to it. The sweet potato basically suffocated the horseradish. So this year we're gonna try it with these pepper plants and these pepper plants so far are being very uh, thriving very well. And then we also have a, a marigold that we interplanting with here as well to help deter pests to keep them off of uh, any type of uh, peppers that's gonna be on here. These right here are our container mix experiment, the Keystone Giant Sweet Peppers, and those peppers are getting huge. We'll put a card above uh, for that video. These are our sweet banana peppers. We have three in this uh, large fabric container, and they look pretty, got a nice good size on them. So we're gonna harvest a little bit of these and then show you our tomato row. Here in North Texas, it just gets, around June time, it just gets so hot. It's hard to grow big, juicy tomatoes. So we found that it's very good to grow like cherry tomatoes, grape tomatoes, and uh, plum-sized tomatoes. Therefore, like determinate tomatoes and cherry tomatoes, uh, you will be able to grow. And this has been so far our most successful year of having tomatoes. We have a lot of these patio tomatoes, and back here we have like, uh, Roma tomatoes and a another patio version of a tomato that have been, we've been almost picking almost like at least three to four each week uh, off of these vines and we've been grateful. We added some mulch because it's just now getting hot and it's been drying out the soil, the, the water when we water them, water these plants, it just evaporates. So we decided to add some mulch to help retain some of that moisture and protect the roots from the heat. I added some sunflowers uh, to greet each of the archways. I just really love sunflowers, so they're just starting to look nice and healthy. And this arch trellis, uh, Mrs. Naked Gardener wanted to get these Trapino, what are these squash called? Zucchino Rampicante. Zucchino Rampicante. Uh, these were actually pretty good last year. I think we only had one plant and they were just popping off. We wish we had more. So we decided to add four for this arch trellis to grow. And uh, next to zucchini, these are my favorite squash. Here we have the hot peppers. Uh, the first peppers we showed you were mostly the sweet peppers. Here are the hot peppers. We didn't want to kind of, uh, even though we're not going to save the seeds of these peppers, 
We didn't want it to still cross pollinate just in case if we happen to get a, a uh, pepper seed that we wanted to harvest and save, or if we do a compost, whatever that may happen, they get uh, cross pollinate. But this year, uh, we have a lot of peppers growing. As you can see, these are our serrano peppers and they were kind of wilted because of the heat. So we added the mulch on there to kind of help reserve some of the water so it wouldn't be as thirsty. And Mrs. Naked Gardener also has these little uh, terracotta spikes where you put some water in a glass bottle to kind of help reserve the uh, watering that we're gonna have to do in this hot summer months that we're gonna be facing here soon. That right. method is the only thing that made them survive last year, even with shave cloth. Yeah. And, uh, ooh, we're about to have one that's about to go right, right here. Oh, and we got one already. Let me see. So we're gonna save that. It's good when you could just pick your own food that you're gonna be eating out of your garden. Uh, here we got some nice anchos. We got some Tabascos. Now, the hotter the pepper it gets, it's gonna take a lot longer for it to get uh, mature. So that's why these are gonna be still small. We added some basil and some marigolds to kind of improve it. And then we even got a volunteer tomato plant in with one of the uh, pepper plants. Now, for the last two years, we, I don't know why we haven't grown any jalapenos, but this year, Mrs. Naked Garden made sure that we get some starter plants of some jalapenos. And we got some good sized ones already. I think I'm gonna harvest some now. Got a good sized one right there. Let's see if I can find, oop, there goes a good sized one right there. Decent size one right there. I want to wait till the most of them get red, mm -hmm. where they call it the chipotle pepper. Yeah, and then you'll just be able to smoke them and eat them. This is our third year having this hummingbird mint, and we decided to put it in our garden. Normally, we just use it as the back piece in our backyard garden, but the bees and the butterflies have been swarming this. And I think that's what's been helping pollinate our, our garden out here. Especially our tomatoes. Especially our tomatoes and as you can see our peppers. So this year, last year we kind of dabbled in the flowers. This year we're actually doing a lot more flowers to help bring more pollinators uh, through here. This has been very disappointing. With us being rushed to trying to get something in the ground, we bought a potting mix or garden mix that we were supposed to be able to grow directly into. And these transplants of cucumber, squash, and even our zinnia flowers still haven't been thriving through this garden mix. So uh, once again, not having everything that we need, especially with the soil. Soil is the base foundation for starting a lot of your uh, plants and growing. This is going to be ready for next year. We're just going to add some compost to it and we're still just going to leave the plants there. If they die, they die. I think adding some fish emulsion fertilizer to this, we might be able to rescue it. Uh, here, however, uh, is the watermelon plant that we uh, saved the seeds from Jess from Roots and Refuge. And uh, we put a marigold in here and these uh, Felox. These are the Felox Superstar. We finally got some blooms off of here and they're starting to bloom some more uh, on these uh, plants. So we're gonna have a lot of flowers. And the good thing about these, these are perennials. So we only have to plant these one time. Uh, with this watermelon, we already got a fruit on here and that's gonna be actually, oh, we got, yeah, we got one good fruit. You can prune watermelon, cucumber plants because they'll have different runners off of here. Uh, if you want to control the growth and the fruit of your plant, you could just put it down to just one main stem of it. Uh, this one already has like three or four runners on there. I think we're going to allow it to stay since all of these have just basically haven't grown. I'm going to try to let it grow on the bottom two trellis on here. Now, this corn section 
we uh, just direct sowed the corn. And over here, we wasn't too sure that you can transplant corn because of the roots of the uh, corn stem. It's very finicky, just like squash plants. But, ooh, and we already got some tassels off of here. That's going to be nice. So we're going to have corn for days. We got about 16 corn here, 16 corn right here. We got them in a uh, bunch so that way when the wind, we get a lot of wind, as you can see, coming from this direction. So when the, the uh, male part of the plant gets the wind and drop down on the husk, that's how you get the form of the kernel of the corn. This is our first year successfully growing corn. So Mr. Naked Gardener brought home some more flowers that we have no place to put. I can always find a place to put some flowers at. Is that right? Yeah, you're. So these were the seeds of the wild um, the American persimmons tree mm -hmm. that we have on our uh, near our pond. And we already have three out of the six sprouting. These two were the first sprout. This one just recently sprouted about a week or two ago. Yeah, it was over a month after planting. Yeah. And so we're excited about that, even though we won't get any fruit from it for, for probably about five to seven years, but just having another uh, persimmons tree out here on our property would be good for our future orchard. Now, this is our second year of growing sunchokes, and we enjoyed them so much fermented last year that every time I try to go to an Asian store, I'll find some sunchokes that we can start. And this is our first uh, in a container for sunchokes. We have like two other containers with some sunchokes in there. So hopefully we'll be able to ferment a lot of these sunchokes towards the end of this year. Here we have our squash and zucchini. We already harvest one of the zucchinis and this is gonna be our first time harvesting the squash. Now with these uh, plants, you gotta be very careful with these because their stems have little prickly spikes on them. So you got to be mindful. And this, like I said, we had a very, so far we had a very successful year with harvesting squash and growing squash. Because uh, last year, this month and the month of June, this is when the uh, squash vine borers come out and start attacking. Uh, so we normally would have to wait uh, around July time frame, July, August, before we can even do a second harvest of these or second planting of these to get a nice harvest. But look at that, that's a good size right there. Uh, we had one of these, oh, we got another zucchini that's about to sprout right there. Now you got to make sure on your zucchini that you get the flower part uh, pollinated uh, once it opens up uh, because you'll have Something like this, where it looks like a blossom end rot, but I do sprays on these plants, a ton spray, to where I know we have some type of calcium uh, in this soil here. So we'll just let, take this one off and put it in the plant. And, uh, and we got plenty more about to sprout up right there. So that's gonna be nice. Now, <laughs> this was a, a trip. Uh, we were sifting out our compost and we had an avocado plant in there or avocado seed in there and it started growing up a stem. So I was like, hey, let's just plant it and we'll just have a plant. We know we won't get any fruit because I think you have to wait seven to nine years to even get the fruit off of here. And I'm not even sure our climate is even well enough to grow avocados or we're in that growing zone. So we're just gonna keep it as a plant However, Mrs. Naked Gardener added these uh, two fake plants and they're starting to get some flower buds on there. Uh, so that's gonna be nice to have it as a uh, floor arrangement around the, the avocado plant. Here we have some containers of some random plants. We have some zinnias on the outskirts. I've already uh, topped them off at the six inch mark. So now they have their sprouts. They're gonna get a little bit more bushier. Here we have yarrow right here. On the outskirts, I put some echinacea bulbs and they were on sale from the big box store, so I'm not sure if they were just old or 
whatever. I just planted in there just to see what happens at the about the middle of July. If nothing happens, we'll just put some more yarrow in here. And then right here, we got some more sun chokes, which I'm happy about. Uh, I did a different container mix. I used, and this container mix I use with some cocoa core, and uh, now just probably just going to mulch it. I've been turning it every so often because, as you see, it tilts toward the where the sun's at. This is something that we brought from our last property. It's been very helpful when we're putting like herbs and th different things of that. Uh, right now we got a lot of basil, as you can see. It's not getting too much direct sun. Probably got to top these a little bit. Well, the board underneath is falling down too, so yeah. it's not holding the water as well. Yeah. And then we, in the middle of here, we have, this is our first year growing this uh, savory plant, and it smells pretty good. Uh, if anybody has grown a savory plant or used savory in any type of recipe, comment down below what recipe that you use. We're interested in learning what dish we can incorporate this with. This is our jicama plant. We kind of grew it late last year and it didn't do too well. Uh, this year we're off to a good start. It looks like it's a viney plant. That was something that we didn't know. Luckily we tried it out last year and found out it was uh, as a viney plant and we're just trying to grow onto different things. I think we just need to get it out into direct sunlight. Yeah, now, now that it has its flowers and it's uh, growing up, we're gonna probably put it out next to the corn area uh one of the sp empty spaces in the corn area and uh that way it could get some good direct sunlight uh i'm interested in seeing how this turns out because it could be used as a potato substitute now we have a lot of uh shade tolerant plants that are underneath this little front porch area i really enjoy this uh oregano this is a hot and spicy uh, mix this is a perennial so if you have a container garden or if, especially if you're living in an apartment or small space you could just plant this and forget it uh, this comes back each year this is our second or third year having this and you could put this in like your pizzas or your Italian dishes or even make some type of essential oil on here. A lot of these we just keep on been growing and growing like our sage, lemon verbena, bee balm. And something that we're very excited about, we had this marshmallow plant. And the reason why we wanted to grow this uh, was we were at a farmer's market in Dallas and Bohemian, Bohemian, Shepherdess. Shepherdess. Uh, we'll put her Instagram link down below. She had this like marshmallow scrub on there. And we asked her about, you know, do you, you know, is it the marshmallow the gooey stuff? She's like, no, it's actually a plant where your marshmallows comes from. So last year we grew this and it just stayed very small. So we decided to put it in our container and it started just to grow, grow, grow. Well, we had that in the bed and I didn't want to leave it. Yeah. And so that was the main reason why we put it in the container because it was starting to do a little something. And so on our way moving, uh, we decided to put it in the container and uh, it just started taking off uh, since then. And we actually had it in more of a sunny area. So we're gonna probably put this out there. So if you, once again, if you have a container garden or live in the apartment, this is an excellent plant to grow. It's a perennial. This company, after our Texas frost, it came back and, and it's a medicinal plant. This is something that we want to try out. Mrs. Nikki Gardner been dying to try these. Uh, these are the Texas Everbearing Fig Trees. Uh, put them in the terracotta pot just to try them out. If they do very well this year, it looks like I got a lot of green on there. Uh, if they do very well, we'll probably put them out in our fruit orchard area, uh, probably year two, maybe year three, just to see how well they'll do. That they, they should be more mature by that time frame, have their roots established. But Mrs. Nicky Gardner is very excited to uh, get these figs out. If you've grown any type of figs, what's your suggestion on growing them? How long have you grown them? And what variety of figs are you growing? Comment down below. Now, this is our first garden tour on this homestead. Now, even though it might not look like it's the best thing, it is our best thing. So if you like these types of videos and garden tours, make sure you give us a thumbs up. It really helps our channel out.
Now, if you're new to the channel and would like to be part of our family, hit that subscribe button on your way out. Now, if you want to see other garden tours that we have done, we'll put a playlist on the side for you to follow along. Until the next video, let's grow together. Well,